Hello everyone and welcome back to Thankful Thriftiness. No matter how much you love cooking, there are occasionally are seasons in life where it's really hard to either find the time or the desire to get dinner on the table every single night, especially when your family enjoys home-cooked meals and you enjoy giving that to them. For me, since getting pregnant, it's been a little bit more of a chore because the cooking smells really make me feel not good at all. And often towards the end of the day, I just don't have that much energy. One day while I was scrolling through YouTube, I came across a video of a woman who made a month's worth of meals or at least dinners for her and her husband in an afternoon. It sounded super ambitious, especially with the way I was feeling, but when I kind of weighed the consequences and the benefits, I thought, what if I feel awful for one afternoon and just like deal with it make a ton of meals and then I don't have to cook again for a really long time. At least dinners. I find breakfasts and lunches are pretty easy. Either it's leftovers or something you've pulled together and I don't really get nauseous cooking breakfast foods. So today I'm gonna walk you through what I did to create a month's worth of dinners for my husband and I in three hours. Well, I don't know if that's fair to say. Between shopping, making the list, and prepping and making everything, it was probably more like an afternoon. Either way, throughout this video, I'm going to share a few tips and tricks along the way that made it a whole lot easier and much more stress-free for me while I was pulling together all these meals. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite freezer meal is to make, and if you have a recipe, please link it because as you can see, I made a lot of a couple things, so next month we will definitely be interested in trying something new. Now, will I adopt this as my new mode of operation? No. However, right before our baby comes, I definitely want to be stocked up on a lot of meals. And if I want to make freezer meals for anyone else, I need to be in a good rhythm on exactly how to get it done quickly and efficiently. My first tip for you, before you even start cooking, is to think about ways you can combine elements of the meals or just combine things or a good workflow. Because trust me, it's a lot easier when you have a plan in place ahead of time and you can combine certain elements of the meals that way you don't have to cook as many times. For me, this meant making chicken enchiladas and tater tot taco casserole. Both involve beans, onions, green chilies, and a couple of other Mexican spices that I could just make up all at once and throw into both of the meals. Did I measure everything? No, and that might make it a little easier or more difficult for you, but I've made both of these dishes before, so I knew approximately how much I needed for both, which made it really easy when the time came to cook it. So make your plan ahead of time and make your grocery list accordingly. In the end, I decided to make chicken enchiladas, tater tot taco casserole, breakfast casserole, and biscuits and gravy. I'm going to link recipes down below for all of those dishes. They might not be the exact ones I used, but they'll be close enough because like I said, I don't measure anything. So there's no way to make sure it comes out the same way twice. After I had purchased all of my groceries, the next step was to plan out exactly how I was going to execute getting all these meals done all at the same time. Because making them one at a time was not going to be an efficient use of the time I'm given or of the pots and pans I have. Because I don't have a ton, like I have enough, but not enough to run three entirely different meals all at the same time. So I started by chopping my onions. My aunt and uncle got me this vegetable chopper for Christmas and it is so nice because chopping onions makes me so nauseous right now, but this helps contain the fumes and make it a very quick chore to get done. I also find it very helpful to hang a grocery bag on the knobs of the drawers just below me when I'm chopping onions and garlic or really any vegetable and I can just easily scrape all the extra bits that I didn't use right into there and it's a much easier cleanup in the end. 
Oh, and also when you're cooking, make sure to listen to some good music. It'll make the time fly a whole lot quicker and it'll make it more enjoyable for you. Once the onions were all chopped, I minced the garlic for both recipes. The next step in preparing my freezer meals was to cook my meat. And I decided to start with boiling the chicken and prepping the sausage. So half the sausage, well actually, a lot more than half the sausage was going towards the breakfast casserole and what was left was going towards biscuits and gravy which I actually served my husband that night and got an extra freezer meal out of. After my sausage was fully browned, I removed the amount I would need for the breakfast casserole and set it aside. I then added some flour to the sausage that remained cooking. There's no exact recipe to this. I could link a recipe below, but honestly just look up how to make sausage gravy. It's not rocket science. You just kind of add some flour, add some milk, seasonings, and cook it till it's thick enough. I continued whisking and cooking the gravy until it was just the perfect consistency. Now onto the chicken enchiladas. While I had been cooking the sausage and the onion, the chicken had been boiling merrily away next to me on the stove. While that was cooking, I threw all the rest of the enchilada ingredients into a bowl except for the cheese and the enchilada sauce. Those ingredients are green chilies, chili beans, black beans, the onions, the garlic. Oh, and just for a treat, I threw in some corn. Once the chicken was cooked through and able to be shredded, I threw it directly in with the rest of the enchilada ingredients. I added cumin, paprika, garlic powder, salt, and black pepper. As you can see, there were no particular amounts that I added. I just added and then tasted and added and tasted again until it was just right. I then began adding some of the enchilada sauce and remembered I had not yet shredded the chicken, which in hindsight, I would definitely do before I add the chicken to the rest of the ingredients because as you can see, I ended up having to use my hands to shred the chicken, which is fine and all, it just felt really messy. Once all that chickeny goodness was shredded and incorporated with the rest of the ingredients, including some more of the enchilada sauce, I began stuffing the tortillas and adding them to the casserole dishes. Using a whole package of chicken, this recipe made two big casseroles of enchiladas and one little one. I then added some of the enchilada sauce and then remembered I'm supposed to add the cheese and then the enchilada sauce, so I added the cheese and then more enchilada sauce. <laughs> And then it's all complete. A tip for giving away freezer meals is to cover them in foil and then write the baking instructions with a Sharpie marker on the foil. Then they don't have to go searching for them. And did I mention that shopping and cooking in bulk can save a lot of money on your grocery budget? 
just for that reason alone, I feel like I should be doing this more often. So to be completely honest with you, by the time I got around to making the tater tot taco casserole, say that 10 times fast for me, I was so sore and tired just from being up and about, it's just a pregnancy thing, I'm fine, that I didn't even have the energy to film the making of this casserole. So all you're seeing here is all the ingredients incorporated into a bowl, put into the casserole dishes, and covered in beautiful tater tots. I'll link a recipe down below for this casserole. It's pretty simple and really delicious and totally worth it. It involves rice, ground beef, and then all those typical Mexican ingredients that we added to the enchiladas. The breakfast casserole, in my opinion, is by far the easiest of these recipes to execute, except for the sausage gravy once you get the hang of it. There's a recipe and a video linked below for how to make this casserole. Basically, it consists of a layer of hash browns, sausage, and eggs. And if you want, you can add cheese. I didn't choose to this time. This one was very heavy on the sausage, very high in protein, and I figured it'd be a really good breakfast for my man. A healthy start to his day. And that's it. At the end of the day, I had 42 servings prepped, if I'm counting correctly. And I'm so thankful that we are able to just grab a meal from the freezer when we need it, because it makes life a whole lot easier on the weeknights, especially when both of us are working. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know, again, in the comments below, any freezer meal ideas you have, or even freezer meal theme ideas to make it cohesive and easy to make them all together, like I did a Mexican theme for this batch. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.